All right, there's this insane lady who got enraged over the fact that her friends and family wouldn't pay $1,500 each to attend her extravagant wedding. So she called the wedding off. And, well, I'm just going to read you what she wrote. Because somebody uh, screenshot whatever she wrote and put it on in Imgur. So, here we go. Dear friends, it comes with great sadness that I am announcing the cancellation of the blah 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 wedding. They, they crossed it off so you can't read it. I apologize for canceling only four days beforehand. Unfortunately, Blank and I have been broken up due to some recent and irre irreparable problems. We have decided to end our relationship and not go forth with any future proceedings. However, we are remaining civil and are st still a team for our son. After hours of tears, mental exhaustion, and even disassociation, I have come to this decision. In one hour after posting the status, I am going to delete my Facebook. Social media has caused me only paranoia and toxicity. Yeah, it's social media's fault. I will be spending these next two months backpacking in South America, exploring my soul and ridding myself of toxic energy brought on by my friends and family, the ones who I thought I could trust the most. She she wants $60,000. She wanted $60,000 for this wedding. Her friends refused to pay for it, so it's her fault. And, and they're the toxic ones, okay? Hence, I will be out of the country for all of October and November. Please don't contact me. When I'm ready, I may make a new Facebook and add friends and family that haven't f stabbed me in the back. How did all of this come crashing down? Well, I invite you all on Facebook, players, bystanders, and side characters of the people in my life, to take a seat and listen. You're all involved somehow. Somehow, everyone is wrapped into this mess. Yeah, it's everyone's fault. Even if you weren't invited to my wedding, I don't care. You might hear of the drama, and I'd rather you hear it from me. I'm not asking for sympathy, I just want to tell my story. Yes, you are asking for sympathy. You wrote, like, what, four pages? Like, four or five screens worth of text, explaining, you know, trying to excuse yourself. Ugh. Okay, well. Before I begin this mini-novel, I invite all of you, including the c*** who have ruined my marriage and life, to put yourselves in my shoes. For once, let me take the stage and let me voice the most painful few months of my life. First things were First, things were a fairy tale. Emphasis on the phrase fairy tale there, because I might come back to that. I might I met the love of my life at 14. We were both young, but somehow we just knew we were meant to be. You don't know that sort of thing when you're 14. Okay? A 14-year-old's conception of love is like a Justin Bieber song. Okay? A 14-year-old's conception of love is like a f Disney princess movie. Okay? You, you don't understand... You're not old enough to make those kinds of decisions when you're 14. Anyway. We worked on my family's farm together, and with each summer spent in the fields, our love grew deeper and deeper. Fast forward to high school. We went strong for all four years. He put a ring on my finger when I was 18, worth nearly $5,000. Where the hell did he get $5,000 when he was 18? Like, this must be a family of millionaires or something. Like, spoiled rich kids or something. We'd put everything on the line for each other. Everything. We both chose to attend the same community college. Okay, so apparently they're not rich because they went to a community college. Where the f*** do you get off expecting somebody... Like, like, the $5,000 wedding ring isn't enough? You gotta have a $60,000 wedding when you go into community college? And work full-time in order to build our dream. We spent most of our days by each other's sides. I will always be thankful for that. Fast forward a few years, I was 20. I realized I was pregnant with, our, with my first. We were elated, tearful, and thankful to God for this gift. After giving birth to Declan... Who the hell names a kid Declan? Come on. I knew the next step would be to focus on my career and become financially stable. My ex did the same. We saved and saved. I was in love, I was happy, and I was looking forward to life. We continued working and even got our degree. It was hard, yes, but so blissfully worth it. We managed to save up nearly $15,000 for, for a wedding. Since our love was like a fairy tale, we wanted an extravagant, low, extravagant blowout wedding, one where our, our son could be included. We started touring venues and, and were torn between two. A local psychic told us to go to the more expensive option, and we thought, why the hell not? 
a psychic. A psychic. We just needed a little push. Our dream wedding amounted to $60,000. All included with flights to Aruba. Aruba. They wanted to go to Aruba for their wedding. Community college. All we asked for was a little help from our friends and family to make it out. A, a little. A little. You, you ask somebody... $1,500 $1, is not a trivial amount of money for most people. Okay? I mean... Uh, most Americans don't make that much in a month. Well, maybe they do. I don't know. I'm poor. I don't I don't understand. I don't know money. But... In any case, it's it's still not a trivial amount of money. I mean, that's like a month's rent on, on a good-sized apartment. You know? Specific, I specifically, I mean specifically, asked for cash gifts. How could we have our wedding that we dreamed of? They, she, she actually wrote our in ca and we in capitals. So I'm not putting the emphasis there. How could we have our wedding and we, that we dreamed of without proper funding? We'd sacrificed so much and only asked each guest around $1,500. Only asked for $1,500. We talked to a few people who even promised us more to make our dream come true. My maid of honor, who shall not be named, pledged $5,000 along with her planning services. We tearfully thanked and accepted. My ex's family offered to contribute $3,000. So, so our request for $1,500 for all our guests was not out of the ordinary. You managed to find two people, one who, one who is willing to, to give you $5,000 and another $3,000. So you think it's you think it's not unreasonable to ask her fifteen hundred because of that? Like we made it clear, if you couldn't contribute, you weren't invited to our exclusive wedding. It's a once in a lifetime party. So we sent our RSVPs, and only eight people replied and sent us the check. Are, and you're surprised? We were f livid. How is? Why do I get the feeling she was the only livid one, and the groom was just kind of like, "Yo, well, I kind of expected it." You know, that—that's how I. This is how I'm picturing it going in my head. Like the poor groom is sitting there, like you know, with with this enraged bride. And he's like, "Well, you know, he does—he doesn't know what to say. He, he like uh, he's sitting there. He doesn't want to piss her off even even more, but he knew what would happen." Is, uh, how is this supposed to? <laughs> How is this supposed to happen without a little help from our friends? To make matters worse, my ex's family took back their offer. <laughs> Suddenly, more people backed out, including the <laughs> maid of honor, my best friend since childhood, <laughs> my second family. I was so shocked and tearful. To make matters worse, it was only a, a month before the wedding. To cancel everything would have been more than $5,000. Desperately, we, we resent our invites and asked people to donate what they could. I mean, seriously, people, what is a thousand dollars? What is fifteen hundred? Fifteen hundred is that's that's like a f mortgage payment. Clearly, not a lot. <laughs> it would be quite manageable. Uh, a and F within. Uh, she misspelled the word word and. I got confused for a second. It would have. It would be quite manageable and within budget. I've heard of people asking for worse. We all. The, other people ask for worse. Does that make it okay for you to ask $1,500 for everyone who attends your wedding? It's not like it's an investment for them. It's your wedding. We also set up a GoFundMe. That only got us $250. At this point, we were exhausted, tired. I yelled at my ex. I became unraveled. I realized my dream wedding was becoming a nightmare. Then it got worse. She put, then it got worse in its own paragraph, you know, for that dramatic effect. My ex came into the room and offered to get a Vegas wedding done. I laughed at his face, but he was dead serious. He wanted those cheap, raggedy, filthy, whore-like Vegas weddings. I mean, what the f***? He was, was, was he out of his mind? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what was he out of his mind for realizing that you're not going to get $60,000 for your f***ing 
wedding in Aruba and suggest you, you do it cheap in Las Vegas. Yeah, he's the one who's out of his mind. Am I some hooch piece of f trash, a hooker? Am I supposed to like the idea of getting married in the heart of a shady gambler's alcoholics and get the get rich fast fallacy? Suddenly my body began to shake as I entered a panic attack. My ex left the room and didn't apologize for his horrid suggestion. I then called my maid of honor and cried my eyes out. Instead of sympathy, I was told that I was asking for way too much and I should stick to my budget. Oh, what a what a horrible, horrible person she is for suggesting that. I mean, no words can describe how could someone who offered me thousands of dollars then deny me my promised money <laughs> and then tell me to shift down my budget? She knows my dream was a blowout wedding. I just wanted to be a Kardashian for a day and then live my life like normal. Why are these... What is it with these people idolizing the Kardashians? What are the Kardashians even famous for? Like, what do they do? As far as I know, the only reason they're, fam they're famous is because one of them, you know, f a rapper or something. You know, it's, it's, that's what they're famous for. You're, why would you come? Why would you want to be like that? Somebody who got famous for f a rapper, they got a bunch of stupid reality shows or something, and got rich that way. That, that that's that is a, a a less than honorable way to get rich, if you ask me. Not the type of person you want to emulate. I called her a filthy f poor excuse of a friend and hung up. Then she blocked me off all social media. Rumors swirled. I received anonymous threats. <laughs> but here we go. It's, it's always like, oh, I, I, got, I got threats. Everyone is justifiably angry at me, but I'm getting threats. You know, it, it, it's... It, 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 she's pulling a Zoe Quinn here. My ex stayed out later and later. And I have a feeling he even cheated. <laughs> oh, I wonder why. My bridesmaids climbed up, climbed on the boat with my maid of honor and dissed me. They essentially told me I was crazy. Oh, I can't imagine where they got that idea. They asked for their de deposit back, so I said, F you." I refused to give it back until they could pay me back for their for their emotional distress. My ex started to t talk. <laughs> my my ex started to talk to my maid of honor and gossip about me behind my back. I overheard him talking in the basement when he called me a stuck-up. Uh, I think a little bit got cut off here. Anyway, I am exhausted. I am bone tired. My heart is not the same. It's stone cold, fragmented, empty. I need to get away from this awful society. How hard? <laughs> how hard would it have been to? Donate friends. Do I matter to you? <laughs> like she, she, like she just deserves to have all this money thrown at her. Just f give me money f for my wedding. I don't even sugar. I won't even sugarcoat. I won't even pretend that's not what I wanted. It was for a dream. I was stabbed, cheated on, and worked. Goodbye. See you in two months. Friendly reminder to you. C don't think you own me. Don't. Don't think you own me? I'm cutting all of your all of you snakes off. I am living my life alone now. I only let in those I believe have good intentions. XOXO. I have no words. You're, you know, there's some comments here. I have no words. You're out of your mind, Susan. What happened to you? Who, who on hell expects that amount of money? I, I, I'll tell you who expects that kind of money. All right. Uh, what, the, the phrases that come to mind are female entitlement and princess syndrome, or princess mentality, if you want to call it that. Now, obviously not all women are like this, but it seems we have this generation of women who grew up watching these, you know, Disney princess movies and, you know, things like Twilight and shit, where, you know, they'll have, like, it, it, these are movies about, like, some damsel in distress who has men fighting over her, like in Twilight, or these princess movies. Like, what is the appeal of being a princess? Well, they have all the power and prestige and money of a queen, but none of the responsibility. 
So, you know, with these little girls grow up watching these movies, and then they get it in their head that they deserve to have a Prince Charming, you know, come cater to, you know, all their whims. And any man who isn't, you know, able to live up to those ridiculously high standards just isn't, you know, worthy of them. But then, you know, you get these extreme cases like Susan here, who extend it to everyone they know. Like, they just, they, they think they're entitled to have money thrown at them because they're, they're a f princess. Right? They think they deserve to have this humongous extravagant wedding in Aruba just because they're just so special, you know? I don't know what else to say about it. It's so... it's ridiculous. And you keep hearing all this crap about, like, oh, male entitlement, male entitlement. And then you see shit like this. I don't see any men going around demanding money just for existing. And again, it's not like all women are like this, but... You know... What, what, what are the... Like, who, who are... He, what are the heroes of this generation? Like, who, who are these girls looking up to? They're looking up to people like Kim Kardashian, like Susan said. She wanted, a, in her words, a Kardashian wedding. You know, like she said, she said she wanted this uh, fairy tale wedding, and like I said, it, it, she's got this Disney princess mentality. They have they have these unrealistic expectations, and they, they grow up with these people like the Kardashians as their heroes, people like Paris Hilton, and. You wonder why they grow up so so f***ed up in the head. Because of that. These, these are not the types of people you should be looking up to. And yet... These are the people our culture is inexplicably obsessed with. I'm, I'm, and you hear about, like, uh... You see these people complaining about, like... A uh, male power fantasy, or, like, like, like... The Doom games, or like, you know these superhero movies, or, you know, Schwarzenegger films. It's it's all male power fantasy this. Uh, and, well, isn't that, like, what the, the, isn't that what these princess movies are? When you think about it, they're, they're power fantasy. The, the only difference is, in these male power fantasy movies, like Commando or Predator, they, they have some, like, genuine obstacle to overcome using their, you know, strength, brave, bravery, and cunning. But in these princess movies, it's it's like... The, the power fantasy is having a bunch of people just do things for you. Like in Twilight, she's got... Like, what does Bella Swan do in the Twilight movies? She, she, she sits around waiting to be rescued, while a bunch of, like, these different groups of people fight over her. You know, like, you got these people... Like, you got Edward and Jacob, who are willing to endanger the lives of their friends and families for her sake. That... If, if you have somebody who's willing to do that for you, that's power. So don't tell me Twilight isn't a power fantasy. Anyway... Uh, I, I guess that's all I have to say about the, this, this subject. Like, comment, subscribe, support me on Patreon. I'm gonna go lay down.